Hey guys, how's it going? It's Simi Fermion here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Final Fantasy XVI. I have to admit one thing. I went into this game blindly, I didn't know what to expect, and I have to say that I had a really good experience with it. Now, this review is going to be one that is uh, spoiler-free, and I'm also going to mention one important thing. This is from the perspective of someone who has never, never played uh, any Final Fantasy game. So, maybe I'm going to have a different opinion on the game, as opposed to someone who has, like, a history with the franchise. Again, this is a subjective review. You might disagree with some things, that's totally fine, everybody likes different things. But, I just hope that you have found enjoyment in this game too, because I think it's been amazing. So, starting off with arguably the most important part of this game, at least for me, the combat. So, what really sold me was the fact that um, people who have worked on games like Devil May Cry or Metal Gear Rising and Bayonetta also worked on Final Fantasy XVI. And I have to say it really shows, because I see a lot of moves that are straight up copied from Devil May Cry 5, which honestly to me is a good thing. Like, I really love that game, and being able to have some of that experience carry over here has been fantastic. Like, I really felt at home playing this. One thing I really like about this game is that it basically combines a lot of characters from Devil May Cry in specific. And you're going to see this, especially as you get more iconic abilities, that you really are a combination of Nero, Dante and Virgil, all three packed in one. And the further you get into the game, the better it gets, pretty much. And that's not to say that it's really as deep or as complicated as Devil May Cry. I have to say, I kind of felt like the aerial combat is a bit lacking, at least compared to DMC. And I have to attribute this to mainly the fact that you are kind of limited in the air. You cannot use a lot of abilities while airborne. You only have like a very, very small selection of them which you can use. And I think that kind of hurts the game itself in a small way. Again, it's not anything major and you can just do combat on the ground just fine. But as someone who loves being airborne all the time, I really like it. And another thing that kind of bothers me is that you can jump on top of enemies, but unfortunately that is limited to only two jumps at most, which honestly it's not really enough, at least, at least as someone who has been, again, a huge DMC fan who spends almost the entire combat in air, kind of wasn't the best just being this limited, but again, it doesn't change the fact that the combat itself is extremely fun. Now, when it comes to bosses, oh man, so... <laughs> I knew that I was gonna get a very Metal Gear Rising-esque experience, but I didn't know that it was gonna be something this uh, grand, to put, uh, to put it lightly. One thing that happens a lot with games is that you will often get to a great boss, and you're gonna think to yourself like, damn, I'm never gonna beat a bot that good again in this game. And I kinda had the same thought at first, but that was only until I got to the second boss, and then the third, and then the fourth, and every single fight just kept getting better than the previous one, which is not something that you see often. I will admit, there was one fight in specific that was kind of underwhelming in terms of uh, spectacle. I'm sure that everybody knows what I'm talking about if you've played the game. But while it does lack in spectacle, I have to say that, at least in my opinion, it more than made up for it in the terms of the fight quality. I personally have to say that it's probably the best fight in the game, at least it's my favorite. Again, not in spectacle, but just the fight itself, the mechanics and everything that goes on. It really reminded me of a fight from Devil May Cry 3, and if you have played the game, you know what I'm talking about. If not, you have to try it. Uh, both DMC3 and FF16, by the way, uh, you're not gonna regret it. Moving on to another part of the game that I think is gonna be important to many people, it would be the story. 
so in my eyes it was perfect. I've enjoyed it from start to finish, I think the characters are great, and I have to say the voice acting has been some of the best I've ever seen in any video game ever. I've seen one uh, criticism a lot when it comes to the story, and that would be the pacing of it. Because in some moments you essentially go from killing a god to then gathering materials for some random thing. And that kind of breaks the pace, I will say, for a lot of people. I kind of liked it. It was pretty much a moment of rest. And I really enjoyed the world building that comes with these type of quests or activities, rather. Again, I can see why it would not be everyone's cup of tea, but to me it wasn't really a huge deal breaker. And of course, I cannot talk about the good things without ever mentioning the soundtrack. It was phenomenal, it was brilliant, and it was just a pure joy to listen to the tracks in the game over and over again. I don't do this very often, but with this game I found myself actually listening to the music even when I'm not playing the game. It's that good. Now with the good things out of the way, there's a few negative things I wish to mention as well. Arguably the most common form of criticism that this game receives is in the form of RPG elements. Some people were expecting to get a more rich experience when it comes to customization, when it comes to not only your gear, but also the element of the attacks that you're using. In reality, it really doesn't matter. Of course you want as good gear as possible, because you're gonna deal more damage and receive less damage if you have better gear. But when it comes to your elements, there's really nothing important to it. For example, you can hit a fireball with fire attacks and you're gonna do full damage. For some people it's gonna be immersion breaking. I personally didn't care, because I just wanted the action gameplay. But I can absolutely see why somebody would be bothered over something as such. If anything, what I've been bothered with the most is the presence of these RPG elements. The little of it, anyway. For example, I'm currently playing through New Game Plus, and I don't like that I have to keep going back to actually craft gear in order to have my damage keep up with the scaling enemies. In the main game, I, I mean not in the main game, in new game, I did not really mind this that much because I was doing the quests, I was pretty much focusing on getting everything done, and it was actually a pretty fun experience getting all kinds of weapons. But now, when I just want to fight constantly and not worry about these things, it's kinda tedious, I have to say. Maybe you won't have this experience, but this is just what I feel. For example, in Devil May Cry 5, you don't have to worry about gear or anything at, as such. Okay, you kinda have to do it for one character, but that's just like a big exception. Anyway, the point is, there you're just having fights constantly. You're just in combat, you don't worry about anything else. Here you have the combat and you also have to make sure that you're kept up with your potions and your equipment. It's not that big of a deal. It's not a deal breaker for me, it's not making the game any worse, admittedly, but it's just a bit annoying. Besides this, another thing that really got quite a lot of heat are the side quests. A lot of people are saying that it feels like an MMO in some ways, and I absolutely agree with them. Now, being a guy who grew up on World of Warcraft, these quests were a joke, in the sense that they were quick, they were pretty easy, and I like them, personally. Then again, I'm used to way worse, so maybe I shouldn't give my opinion on this. But at least from a narrative point of view, I think the story quests were really good. My biggest form of... Uh, my biggest gripe with uh, side quests comes in the form of some of them not being main quests. I genuinely believe that if they were part of the main story, at least a few of them, the game would actually be better. Now, I'm gonna say a bit of a spoiler, so jump ahead if you want, but there is a quest where you can actually get a mount and you're gonna be able to run faster, and it's a side quest. A lot of people are gonna miss that, and I think that's actually bad game design. Of course, I understand that you want to reward people who do everything, 
but to me it just feels like it should just be in the base game I'm not in base game in the base story so that everybody can get it without missing it but anyway that's just my opinion and again for me it doesn't make the game worse but I can see why somebody would be bothered with it and while we're on the topic of mounting my actually biggest issue is not being able to sprint so you kind of do have it after you run for about five to eight seconds it feels like that you actually start sprinting but the issue is that it feels so slow getting to that point the interesting thing is that this is also a mechanic that was present in devil may cry 4 in the original release at least basically if you run in one direction you're going to get a very big uh, movement speed boost. Same here, it was awful in that game and it's awful in this game as well. However, there is one difference. That game came out in 2008. In 2015, I believe, uh, a remaster came out for it and they actually buffed this, where you only had to run for about one second in order to start sprinting. And I don't understand why we can't have the same here. Either that or just let us sprint whenever we want. I genuinely believe this is something that would make the game instantly better for everyone, but what do I know? Now for more of a personal complaint, I kind of wish we could turn off cutscenes. When you play the game for the first time, it's great. You watch them, you love them, you're having a fun time. But when you're playing the game again just for the combat, it's actually kind of annoying having to skip through 4 to 5 cutscenes at once. I simply wish there was an option to turn them off, Kind of like in the arcade mode. Uh, thankfully this is one of those things that I think they could fix. Or they could simply add it. If they wanted to. If not, it's not a big deal. You can just skip them. But once again, it would save some time and I think it would be better for the game if you just had the option to not have any cutscenes show up. Last but not least, I have a very 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 minor complaint but it actually annoys me so much. <laughs> and I've never seen anybody talk about it so... Here it goes. There is one section in the game where you actually get the ability to dodge, like in Dark Souls. Basically, rolling. You don't get this anywhere else, and it's only usable for like a few seconds. And I really don't understand why we can't have an option, maybe an accessory, to actually do this while we're fighting. I'm not saying that it has to be good or something, but I think it would just be funny being able to do a Dark Souls-esque playthrough with just rolling and using basic attacks. But anyway, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. That would be about it, and if I had to give this game a rating, for me personally, the highs are so high that they kind of cancel out the lows. I'm really enjoying it, I'm still having fun, even after 70 hours of gameplay, and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. Personally, it's a 10 out of 10 game. Objectively, more like an 8 or a 9 out of 10, and once again, I believe this is going to be Game of the Year contender, and if not, I just hope that the soundtrack wins something, because man, Soken deserves it. So, thank you guys for watching, I hope to see you again sometime soon, and take care everybody. Goodbye.